Welcome to another show. I was just thinking how as it gets nicer outside, I get more and more active. Do you guys have a favorite sport? Maybe it's soccer, maybe it is baseball. I really love baseball. You know, if you don't know the rules, baseball, you can get lost. You can get lost, it's not so fun. But if you know the rules and you play by the rules, it's really, really fun. Now we have a game today. Of course, there are different innings, different rounds, and lots of rules. We will see who becomes a school champion and maybe becomes a super kid. Hey, who have you invited in today? Where are you guys from? Let's start playing! Woohoo! A school that teaches its children to love themselves and love the world. Let's meet Seoul Taegwang Elementary School. A prestigious name in education, Taegwang Elementary is a private school that offers curriculums based on Christian beliefs. The Taegwang Elementary Orchestra is the pride of the school. They learn to play a variety of musical instruments to develop their musical talents. Drink milk. It's time for their English lesson. Students learn English from native speaker That's teachers. Another important aspect of the in addition, they are getting a true taste of the native everyday language through live video chats with teachers in the Philippines. Doesn't it seem like fun? <coughs> Here at Taegwang Elementary School, the students receive a global education and Christian love to become good students who strive to make the world better. All the best on Super Kids today! That's how we move. We have about five rounds. Everybody starts here. No teams, like there may be in baseball. Everybody competing against everybody else. Among this crowd, 10 will move on after a bunch of hurdles. That's right, five questions at least asked by amazing lady, Tommy. Hey Isaac, and hey there, super kids. Well, you know, earlier when Isaac asked, what's your favorite sport? Well, mine is swimming, because, you know, the water is really cool, and once you get into the water, it feels so nice, especially in this hot weather, you know what I'm saying? Well, just like Isaac said, once again, if you don't know the rules of the game, it could kind of get a little complex, but he explained everything, and I understand that you know all the rules to this round, okay? So let me just go ahead and go on to the first question, all right? So listen carefully. In the novel Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift, Gulliver sails to strange places on a ship. What is Gulliver's job? Ever read that book, Gulliver's Travels? Real fun, real exciting. Ghost places. The question is, in the book, Gulliver's Travels, what was his job? Was he a firefighter? Was he an airplane pilot? What was his job? Was he a, a teacher? He had a job. We'd like to know what it was in five, four, three, two, one seconds. Up with the boards, please raise the boards. Raise them high, all the way up, all the way up. The answer is doctor. Doctor, physician, or surgeon are all fine. The answer was doctor or surgeon, you know? Now, many people read the novel, but there's also an animation version of Gulliver's Travels. So whenever you get the time, you should either read the novel or watch the animation yourself. All right, now this second question is about deserts, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and um, listen to this question, all right? In deserts, it is very difficult to find water. However, here you will find a spring that provides a constant supply of water and even trees. So people and animals usually live around here. What do you call this place? 
In deserts, it's not easy to find water. It's easy to find sand. So what is this place? You might find water and trees. People and animals might visit this place. Write the answer down, turn it over. Write it down, turn it over. Spelling does count. Five, four, three, two, one. Raise the boards, please. And the answer is Oasis. Oasis. Yay, the answer was Oasis. Well, if we didn't have any oasis in the desert, then I'm pretty sure there wouldn't be any trees or any existing animals in the desert because it's so hot and dry. So thank you, Oasis, for being there. All right, now this next question is a math question, and it looks kind of difficult. So it would be a good idea to take down some notes while I'm reading you this question. There is a metal spring that stretches evenly according to the weight that is hung on it. When one weight is hung on it, its length is 12 centimeters long. With three weights, the spring becomes 20 centimeters long. Then how long is the spring without any weights hanging from it? There is a spring. This is not where water comes out, but a metal spring that stretches evenly according to the weight put on it. So when one weight is hung on it, it's 12 centimeters long. When three weights, are on it, it becomes 20 centimeters long. Five, four, three, two, one. Please raise your boards. Let's see your answers. Lots of answers. The answer, the correct one is eight centimeters. question for me. I mean, I kind of had a hard time, but y'all guys did a great job. All right, here's the fourth question, all right? Now, the fourth question is about the internet. So, for those of you who are clicky click doing the PC sometimes, well, who knows? You might get this answer. All right, now listen carefully. You will often see www in the first part of an internet site address. The first W stands for world. The second W stands for Y. Then what does the third W stand for? Internet in this day and age. Korea, one of the most wired countries in the world. So many connected to this. WWW, look at the address. First one stands for world. Second one stands for wide. Third one stands for what? Does it stand for? Five, four, three, two, one. Please raise your boards. Raise them high, raise them up. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Well, the answer is web. WWW stands for World Wide Web. That was great. Now, you know, the internet is like a communication system that connects people throughout the whole world. I mean, what would we do without it? All right, last but not least, here is the last question. And it categorizes in science. And just to be a little bit more specific, hmm, I see rainbow in the question. Now, listen carefully. This word is used in science to describe the range of colors in light when separated using a prism. Rainbows that you see after rain are a good example of this. What is this word? This word is used in science to describe the range of colors in light when separating into a prism. Rainbows that you see 
after rain are an example of this. What is this word? Five, four, three, two, one. Please raise your boards. The answer is spectrum. Spectrum. Excellent job to you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, more ladies than gentlemen. But you guys are all moving on. That is the good news. Uh, also some good news, I think we're going to be joined by this tremendous lady in the next round. Am I right, Tommy? That's right, Isaac. But let me just mention, like, OMG, there are more girls than guys. But, you know, that's not the important thing. It's important that 10 people are moving on to the next round because we want to know who wants to be the next super kid, all right? All right, well, I'll see you in the next round, all right? I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Okay, ladies, more smart. Okay, well, anyway, smart lady, we'll see you in the next round. You guys ready to go? Yes, I get some nods. Let's go to the next round. to travel. I do. And I love this round because we travel somewhere in the world. Where are we going to go this time? Check it out. Located in the southwestern part of Europe, Spain is a country of passionate dance and exciting festivals that keep people happy all year round. Spain is home to many great artists and writers such as Picasso, Cervantes, and Gaudi. It is also the country with the second most number of world cultural heritage. Just like the hot sun of Spain, the people of Spain are passionate about life. Let's find out more about the history and culture of Spain. Passion, excitement, red, bullfighting, yes! And of course there's Dami too. You're from Spain too, right? See, si, I'm from Spain. No, I'm just kidding. But I am wearing an outfit that is from Spain, and I feel very, very brilliant in it, and I feel the pasión. Indeed. In English, Spain. In Spanish, España. Pretty cool. Well, let's travel to España with this question. Spain is located on the second largest peninsula in Europe, which is surrounded by the Mediterranean and the Atlantic seas. What is this peninsula called? Okay, number 11, we'll get the mic. So, Iberian Peninsula. Good job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One question down, get your headband. Two questions, you move on. There are five spots, 10 people here. You know how it works. Next question. The Iberian Peninsula has many highlands. On Meseta Central, a low and rolling plateau of up to several hundred meters in altitude can be found. You will find the capital city located at the highest point above sea level in Europe. What is this city that is the capital? Madrid. Good job. Madrid. Yes! Madrid! Good job! Next question. On the national flag of Spain, there is a coat of arms that represents the five dynasties of Spanish history. On both sides of the coat of arms, there are columns of this person. 
Who is this mythical person who created the Mediterranean and the Atlantic seas according to legend? Number four, get the mic to you. Elsit. Anybody else want to give it a try? Three, two, number two. Columbus. Three seconds. Heracles. Yeah, Hercules. the strength of the amazing Hercules. That's right. Now, whenever we hear something mentioned about a flag, usually Tommy's prepared, brings the flag and talks about its history and meaning. And I'm guessing this is one of those times. Am I right? Of course. Now, I brought the flag with me. This is the flag of Spain. And like the answer said, uh, it was Hercules. Now, as you can see, there are two columns right here. And those two columns are called the Pillars of Hercules. Now, it represents the hills on the both sides of Straits, which is connected from the Mediterranean Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean. Now, just to um, talk about the colors, the yellow color is the territory, represents the territory. And the red colors on the upper and the lower part is the blood that was shed that defended the territory. Pretty cool, huh? You know, um, I don't know if I need to get my glasses upgraded or something, but. In the middle there, there's the, the, the symbol. Um, can you get a close-up of that and, and describe that a little bit more? I didn't quite catch, uh, you know, the, the internal meaning of that. Okay, well, here's a, ma a magnified uh, part of the flag. Now, right here, as you can see, there's some letters. And basically, if you translate it, it says plus ultra. Um, now, really, what it means is to go far away into the world. So to go, you know, to lots of places far in the world. And as you can see, there are five symbols right here. One, two, three, four, five. Now, these symbols, they represent um, the ancient time, the dynasties. Uh, the, the names are Castile, Leon, Aragon, Navarre, and Granada Kingdom. So, see, it's right here. Wow. That's pretty amazing. Pretty deep history. Thank you so much. And uh, we must go forward. So, was it plus ultra? Let's do that right now with the next question. The modern-day version of this instrument that we see now became the way it is in Spain around the 16th century. What is this instrument that has a curved body? Number two. Hang on a second. We'll get the mic to you. Okay, number two. If you get this question right, you're going to be the first person to go on to the next round. So, are you sure about your answer? Okay, well, let's hear it. Guitar. Good job! Oh! Uh -huh. Yeah. Excellent. One spot down, four to go. That's how it's done. Guitar. Music to our ears when we hear the right answer. Here's the next question. Although Spain is a part of Europe, it was once ruled by Muslim rulers. This place is a famous example of Islamic architecture and is located in Granada in southern Spain. There is a famous piece of guitar music about this palace made by the Spanish composer, guitarist Francisco Tarrega. What is the name of this place? Alhambra Palace. Yeah, good job! <laughs> Very good, yes, it is Alhambra. Hmm. Oh. Oh. So romantic. I wish I could play guitar like that. Very nice indeed. Somehow when I hear guitar music like that, I automatically think of Spain. So rich, so much culture. Let's get to another question about this great place. What comes to mind when you hear the following? Andalusia. 
guitar. Number 26. Flamenco. Flamenco! Very good. Well, you know I love music, obviously, and I love dance. And in the past, I have invited uh, dancers to join us to share their expertise. I believe my guest today will uh, do a little of this dancing for us, little flamenco. Please give a warm welcome to our dancers today. Thank you, that was amazing, oh my gosh. If you don't mind, can we ask you a few questions about uh, your dance and stuff? We really loved it. The dance we showed you, it's, it's called Sevillanas. Mm -hmm. It is from Sevilla, a town in Spain. Uh, the dance expresses the joy, sorrows, and passion of the gypsy, mm -hmm. the, life of the life of the gypsy. So uh, what made you want to learn the flamenco? As we are students of the Spanish department of our school, uh, we wanted to learn more things about its culture, uh, about the Spanish culture, and we were also interested in it, so we got to it. All right, so that's how you learned the flamenco. All okay. right. Well, thank you so much. It was very enjoyable, and we're really grateful for your time and your efforts, and I want to learn how to dance like that. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's give them another warm round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> let's keep on going to the next question. What do the following have in common? Picasso Museum. Anthony Gaudi. Football Club. The 25th Olympic Games. All right, number four. Barcelona. Good job. Barcelona. Very good. Yep. Talking about Picasso, the museum dedicated to him is there. Antonio Gaudi, amazing architecture, very wild. Football club, uh huh, Barcelona, and the 25th Olympic Games, all related to Barcelona. All right, got another one for you. Here it is. Along with Real Madrid, FC Barcelona is a soccer team that represents Spain. However, on the FC Barcelona uniforms, there are no corporate logos, but instead, you will see the logo of this organization. What is this organization that supports children who are in need? Yes, number 22. UNICEF. UNICEF! I'm not a big fan of brand names. I understand why it has to be done, but I love the fact that this uniform, this uniform only has that written on it, UNICEF, and indeed, we have that uniform in the studio. Check it out. That's right, I brought a uniform um, right here. This is the FC Barcelona uniform right here. And as you can see, the, instead of you know all these advertisement, corporate advertisements, it only has one logo called UNICEF. Now, um, Barcelona is actually continuing the tradition of not putting any other advertisements except the UNICEF logo in order to help kids in need. It's pretty cool, huh? 
it's really cool, really, really meaningful. And guys, we're going to move on to the next question, really. Cervantes is a Spanish writer famous for the novel Don Quixote. In the story, Don Quixote follows his dream of becoming a wonderful knight with his assistant, Sancho Panza, and an animal named Rocinante. What kind of animal is Rocinante? Number 28. Horse. Great story. Don Quixote. I love it. Okay, guys, we're making a lot of progress right now. I see, let's see, one, two, three, four, at least five headbands, and there are two spots filled, three to go. Let's go to the next question. During the medieval times, Spain explored and colonized many parts of the world, including Europe and even the American continent. This Italian explorer, supported by Queen Isabella of Spain, but Ten. Columbus. Good job. Yeah. Another headband. Definitely spreading out there. It's great that there are so many who know answers. Remember, got to have two to move on. Here's another question. Every summer in Valencia, Spain, there is a festival of this. It is set. Right away. Tomato. Good job. Two in a row. Very good job. That's how it's done. Boom, boom, two in a row. Up there with the others. Two spots to go. I always wanted to go to Spain and join that festival and throw some tomatoes around. Okay, here's the next question. Most countries in Central and South America speak Spanish. However, one of the following countries speak Portuguese. Which country is it? Number 22. Bye, Brazil. Good job. Brazil. <laughs> That's right. Got a guy up there, three ladies and a guy. Which one, um, let's see, speaks Portuguese of Chile, Mexico, Panama, Venezuela? It's Brazil. All right, let's fill one more spot. Here's the next question. Spain is surrounded by the Atlantic and the Mediterranean seas, but shares borders with France to the north. Its northern border follows this mountain range. What is it called? The mountain range. What is it? Surrounded by the Atlantic and the Mediterranean seas, but shares borders with France to the north. The northern border follows this mountain range. Kevia. Anybody know? Three, two, one. Okay, six, you're alive again. The mountain range. Is it the Rockies? Is it the Himalayas? What's this mountain range? It begins with the letter P. Five seconds. Pien. That's how it's done. Five spots filled. I know 22 was like, hey, I'm the only guy here. <laughs> okay. Well, the ladies did a great job. Outnumbered the guys. Four to one right now. Anyway, uh, we'll meet them a little bit in the next round. Want to say thank you very much to Tommy, who helped us out a lot. De nada. I had a great time, and I learned so much about Spain. And, you know, I might as well go there and, you know, join that festival, throw some tomatoes at you, Isaac. No, I'm just kidding. But I'll see you next week. Bye. Adios. <laughs> okay, let's go on to that next round.
quiz within the quiz. We need to find a school champion, and these guys have done an amazing job so far through all of the levels, all of the innings, all of the rounds. Check them out. special people. That's right. Now, among these five, who all have 100 points to begin with, one will get more than the others. We have to have even, you know, a tie-breaking question ready, just in case. Just in case. But for now, we have about 12 questions ready. Four 10-pointers, four 20-pointers, and four 30-point questions. And each of these participants has a chance to use, to double the value of any questions they choose. 10-pointer, if you want. Normally, it's a 30-pointer that gets doubled. We'll see how they use those chances strategically. Let's look at the board. OK, a lot of familiar categories. Global Friends. I uh, really like that one. Magic again. Let's start with the 10-pointer, color being the category. Listen carefully. Which color do the following have in common? Points 7 and 8 on an archery target. Penalty card in soccer shown by a referee to send a player off the field. In a traffic light, it means stop. Number 11. Red. Are you sure? Yeah. Bingo! Yeah! <laughs> Very good. Very good. Of course, red meaning stop, danger. When you get the red card, you're out of here. Excellent way to start it off, number 11. So I heard that um, you enjoy playing computer games. Yeah. Do you like to play as much as possible? Are you able to play every day? Yeah, I'm able to play every day. Cool. OK, well, you enjoy playing our game right now? Yeah, of course. Please choose a category. Magic. Magic! All right, one of my favorites. It's a 20-pointer, and we have our favorite musician. Musician? Magician. It is Chong Su. Come on out! <laughs> Hello, Super Kids, and welcome to the category Magic, which is 20 points today. Now, before we start today's quiz, I've decided to teach you guys a magic trick. Now, do you guys want to learn a magic trick? Yeah! If you, if you do, clap your hands! Okay, a simple trick using a piece of tissue. We're going to rip it like this. Let's rip this tissue like this. And we're to push it all together. Push it like together like this. And oh, the next step is very important. I'm going to need some fairy dust from the back of my pocket. We're going to put some fairy dust like this. And this tissue is back to normal. Wow, good job, yeah. So I'm going to teach you guys how this trick is done. Now this trick is using two pieces of tissue. I'll show you how it's done. Now I'm going to use two tissues like this. Now for the first one, I'm going to open up like this and I'm going to roll it up into a ball. Then I'm going to hide it in my hand. Next, I'm going to tear the other tissue like this. I'm going to tear it all up, it's all torn. After that, I gather them together with the torn pieces and with the untorn pieces, and I push them all together, making it into a small ball. Next, when I hold this in my right hand, I roll the untorn ball up like this. After that, I say I'm going to need some fairy dust, and by taking those fairy dust from my back pocket, I'm going to ditch this torn tissue into my back pocket just like this. You understand how the thing is done, right? Yeah. So it's done, you, you say this, you put and say that. It is really back to normal, done like this. Of course, if you're really good sometimes, as I tell you, if you're really good, you might be able to do 
something like hey. this. <laughs> now here is today's quiz, so listen carefully. Now, in ancient Greece, they say that doctors practice medicine and new magic at the same time. Now this person is one of the most outstanding figures in the history of medicine. This person is also well known to be the father of medicine. Who is this person? Who is this person? Father of medicine. A long time ago, he lived ancient Greece. This person, famous father of medicine, begins with the letter H. <laughs> yes! Hippocrates. Is that the right answer for 20 points? Yes, it is! Very good! All right. Once again, he's good. He's awesome. He's the father of magic here in Super Kids. Chong Su, one more time and give a big I'll see hand. You next week. Yeah. <laughs> see you next week. Bye bye. Take care. Bye bye. Very good. Well, you did it, number 18, and a very historical figure. I heard you like history. Yes. Do you have a favorite historical figure in Korean history? Yes. Who is it? Mm, Lee Sun Shin. All right. Well, 18, you are now in the lead by 10 points. There are the categories. What's your choice? Arthur. Author, writer of books. Here is the question. This person wrote some 200 short stories. Some people say that he was an ancient Greek slave, and others say that he was an advisor to the king. Yes, number 11. Aesop. Is that right? Yes! Yeah. A lot of great fables, a lot of great stories, kind of giving us lessons on how to better live life. Okay, please choose another category. Geography. Geography, 30 points. In 1675, a royal observatory was built on the outskirts of London. However, in the 20th century, it had to be moved because of light pollution. The prime meridian, that is the starting line for longitude, passes through this observatory. What is this observatory called? Okay, an observatory where you observe the stars. Many years ago, in 1675, it was built right outside of London. But London's a big city. So, as London developed, it became very light, and that's why we, we have a concept called light pollution. Seoul, New York, London, it's very difficult to see the stars. So it was moved, but it's a very, very famous. Five seconds. The answer, colorful sandwich, Greenwich. Greenwich, spelled green witch. Greenwich, Greenwich. Okay, Greenwich Observatory, I have not gone there. I've only heard about it, it's supposed to be amazing. That's 30 points, no one's getting. So. Last person who guessed correctly, is that you, 11? Yeah. Then you get to choose again. Mm. Global Friends. Global Friends. Where will we go? Let's find out. Hello, Super Kids. My name is Max, and I live in Shanghai, China. What first comes to your mind when you think of China? Is it Kung Fu, or is it a giant panda that represents China so well? Or perhaps this is the Great Wall of China, which is the only man-made structure that can be seen from space. So here's your, your question. The Great Wall of China is a famous structure that is loved by all tourists around the world. It took Qin Shi Huang, the first emperor of China, about 10 years to build in defense against Xiongnu. Now tell me, what city in China is the Great Wall of China located in? Here's the hint. It was the host of the 29th Summer Olympics. Number two. Beijing. 
Is that right for 20 points? Yeah! <laughs> ben there. Pretty amazing. I guess they can see it from space. Of course, uh, a hint that was not needed where the 29th Summer Olympics were held. Number two, very good job. Now, China, I heard that you can speak some Chinese, right? Yes. And have you lived in China? Yes. How long were you there? For one year. Excellent. So come on. You got to be able to say, I want to be the school champion in Chinese. Can you say that in Chinese? Um, I want to be number one. All right, very good. <laughs> Not bad. Now, I would love to give you extra points for that, but I can't. Uh, very good. Right now, you're tied. Let's see, three people have 120 points. Three people tied in first place. Two others, 100 points. We're just getting started. What's your choice of a category? Art. Art. 10 points. Here it is. Insects have compound eyes, which are made up of thousands of little eyes. So, to them, the world looks like this. This is actually an art form that can be made by using tiny bits of stone, glass, or even paper and fabric. Number 11. Mosaic. Is that correct? Oh, yeah! <laughs> what do they do sometimes uh, when there's news and they don't want to show someone's face? They kind of cover it up. It looks like a mosaic. And I very good. Okay. So, let's continue. What's your choice? Words. Words? Let's go now to words. It's only worth 10 points. What word commonly fits in all the blanks? Blank engine. Blank wall. Camp blank. 11. Fire. She says fire. Is that correct? Uh huh. Yeah. Firefighters. Firefighters, of course, they go around on the fire engines. Firewall, little uh, computer terminology. Campfire, kind of neat to do when the weather's nice and you want to go outside and spend time with your friends or family. Very good. Okay. In the lead right now. Five categories left. What's next? Science. Science for 20. There's the bonus. Yeah. I knew it's going to pop up. There it is popped up. Big prize. Doesn't matter who's in the lead. It matters who gets this right. Science for 20 points and a big prize. Good luck. Here's the question. You can get this material through electrolysis of bauxite ore. The metal that you will get is light but hard, so it is used in cars, planes, and machinery. Also, it doesn't rust very easily, so it is used a lot as cans for food and drinks. What is this metal called? Number 11. Aluminum. Aluminum? Let's see if that's right. Yes, it is! Whoa! Aluminum. <laughs> Congratulations, very good. All right, why don't you put that away before we all feel bad that we didn't get it. <laughs> Stop. Okay, I'm over it. Congratulations. Uh, you have 160 points on a roll. Continue, please. Music. Music for 30. Here it is. You probably have to listen carefully. The music that you are hearing is a concerto with this instrument in the lead. It is a woodwind instrument that has a cylindrical body and uses... Number 18. Oboe. Oboe. Nope. It's not 11? Clarinet. Clarinet. Let's see if that's right. Yeah! So, do you really just play computer games at home or do you study? 
<laughs> I See? play computer games after I study. After you study. Okay, so it's the carrot, the motivation. Very good. Let's choose another category, please. Technology. Technology for 30 again. Guys, good luck. This is used in factories and stores to identify products and in libraries to sort books. Yes, number 10. Barcode. She says barcode. Right now, just 100 on her board. Is that right? Yeah, barcode! Number 10, you're thinking, man, I should have used my chance, right? Yes. Yeah, you are. Okay, so tell us about your family. Uh, do you have any brothers or sisters? I have two older sisters. Okay, you want to say something to them? Please don't bother me. Don't bother me? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, older sisters, don't bother her. There's a lot of love here. So, we have two categories left. Do you want 20 points or 30 points? 30 points. 30 points. That's the health category. Anybody want to use the chance? If you do, press your buzzer now. Okay, go for it. Put it up. Anybody else? Nothing to lose. All right. Good. Two. You don't need it, 11? You're going to wait. Okay, come on. Here is a big question worth 60 points. Good luck to all of you. The category, health. These days, people are paying a lot of attention to the prevention of diseases. This is a medical shot that improves immunity to a particular disease. Number 11. Vaccine. She says vaccine in the lead right now, using the chance. She almost didn't use the chance. Is that the right answer? Yeah! Okay. Good job. That's a big one. Put your chances down, please. Big score, number 11. Big score. Now, you almost didn't use that chance. You're like, okay, well, maybe. And it would have been just worth 30 points. Makes a big difference. Here is the final question for 20 points, the category logic. A case is 12 centimeters long, 12 centimeters wide, and 18 centimeter tall. How many six by six by six cubes can you fit inside the case? Number 22. 12. He says 12. Will he score and be on the board like everybody else? Yeah! Good job. Good job. Everybody got on the board. Everybody scored. It's nice when you it, answer at least one, right? Feels good. Your school, amazing school. But it's number 11 who did the most amazing job, the school champion. She's going to the final round. Let's go! Chicken. Great job. How do you feel? I feel great. Feel great. You did a great job, like I said. Um, man, it seemed like you answered most of the questions in the last round. <laughs> uh, one thing you said that I really, really uh, like as a parent, that's right, I'm a dad, um, is that you do all your work and then you get a reward. You get to play computer games pretty much every day. Yeah. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever, but you do all your homework, which takes how long? Mm, three hours. Three hours or so? Yeah. 
That's pretty good. Work hard, play hard. Now it's time for this final round, which is pretty hard. Your mission is to get one master word. Now, you're going to go through kind of a puzzle to get a couple letters in that master word. After the puzzle, you'll get two words connected to the master word, two hints. Hopefully you get two or three letters, three letters max as you go through the puzzle. When you hear it, a hint, and you just don't know what it is, you can say pass up to three times. It eats five seconds off the clock, but it'll reveal the word after those five seconds. You ready? Okay. Okay, so let's see the letters. A, N, and O connected to puzzles. Three totally different puzzles. Uh, A. A. Okay. Good luck. This black insect always works very hard. Pass. A tool for catching animals or enemies. Pass. In this sport, people glide on ice. Skating. A skate. This word is used to symbolize movies and films. Pass. How many legs does a spider have? Eight. A big group of stars in space often shaped like a belt. Okay, very good. Very good. Good news, the good news is you have a big word and you have the first letter. That's the good news. Didn't get the other two? What can you do? Now I'm gonna give you two hints like I said. You'll hear the first word, get about five seconds. Second word, 10 seconds. I need to hear your answer. The first word is Apollo. Second word. Yellow. Give me your answer. Spaceship. Is it spaceship? If it is, you're the super kid. If not, just the school champion, which is still amazing. Is it spaceship? No, the answer? Sunflower. Sunflower, great job. She did a good job, right? Let's give her a hand, come on. Yeah. There's our school champion. You still happy? Yeah. Still feeling great? You should be proud of yourself. You did an awesome job. Did you have an awesome time, guys? Yeah! Okay. Hopefully you did too. Please join us again for another round of Super Kids! Super Kids has some really great prizes to give away. A notebook computer for the Super Kid. A digital camera for the quiz champion. MP3 players for second to fifth place winners. And Child U Online Education one month membership for everyone on the show. Okay, go for it. Pick it up. But didn't use the tan. 